Section 9.3, example 3. We have a company produces bags of rice that are labeled as containing five pounds of rice. So this would be their claim, right? The label is what they're claiming is in the bag. Doesn't mean it's actually five pounds, but they say there's five pounds. The company routinely performs hypothesis tests on its own product to try to detect if its filling machine is malfunctioning. So malfunctioning, right, would be more or less than five pounds. Um, a recent sample of 12 bags produced the following results. Um, so every bag is going to be a little bit different, right? We've talked about sampling error. It's not possible for them all to be exactly five, but they should all be very, very close. And so here's our sample. Um, since we only have 12 bags, um, we need a normal population, um, which we don't know. There's no way to know. So we can look at the histogram and try to figure that out. But because the data set is so small, it's impossible to see the shape. I mean, it's possible this will be normal with more data, right? But it's also possible it won't be. It's just too small of a data set to see. Too small to see shape. So that's why we're gonna use that probability plot that we briefly talked about a while ago. So in the probability plot, I put that below as well. Um, so this is the probability plot from the sample data. That's the second graph. We did this back um, when we were doing chapter six. Um, and we may or may not remember, but if the probability plot is somewhat linear or approximately linear, right? We'll say somewhat, I think, is the word I used a lot then it seems possible that it could be a normal distribution. And then if this probability plot, if these points aren't even close to a line, then it's not normal. So I think this one, it's not a perfect line. There's definitely this point up here that kind of throws it off. But for the most part, the points are pretty close to the line. Right, they're not over here, or over here. I think it's pretty close to a line. So we'll say because the sample size is only 12, which is less than 15, right? We need the population to be normal. Um, we don't know if the population is normal, but the probability plot gives us an idea. Because the probability plot is somewhat linear, it's reasonable to assume that the population is normal and the requirements have been met. So the probability plot is a good way to check when you don't have a big enough sample size. The other option is to collect more data and meet that sample size. So if you worked here, you could collect 50 bags instead of 12 bags. So that would be another solution. But because the probability plot at least somewhat makes a line, then it's okay. So let's go ahead and perform a hypothesis test. Um, we'll perform a hypothesis test at 5% to determine if the filling machines on average, so we're in mean land, we'll use mu, um, is filling with an incorrect amount. So we'll go ahead and set up that hypothesis. So incorrect would mean not five pounds. So the mean is not five, right? Since the bags are labeled five pounds, they should be filled at five pounds. So then our HO will just be mu equals five. Step two is the nice easy step. What's our significance? 5% or 0.05. Um, so then we'll go to our investigation, our experiment. Um, so we'll enter the data into L1 so that we can find the mean and standard deviation. And that'll give us X bar and S, right? These are sample values. So go ahead and enter the data into your calculator. I already did that, so go ahead and hit pause. And then you'll do one var stat L1. So come back once you've entered your data. I already did that. Right, stat, edit, I've already put everything in. So pause, so you have time to put everything in, and then we'll do one var stat. And I'll write down the mean. We get a mean of 5.0525. We get a standard deviation of 0 0.13451, and then I'll just write down N as well, which was 12. All right, let's go ahead and start step three now. So that's finding our t-score, right? Because we're doing t-score instead of z-score now. 
So we'll take the sample mean minus the um, hypothesis mean divided by S over root N. So 5.0525 minus 5 all over 0 0.13451 over square root 12. And then add those parentheses so it's in the calculator correct. Without those parentheses, it's probably wrong on the calculator. So we'll enter the numerator in parentheses on the calculator and then divide by denominator in parentheses. And if you're getting a different number than me, then it's probably an issue with parentheses. And we get a t-score of 1.352. You can always do just the numerator, just the denominator, and then divide, um, but you can't type everything at once without parentheses. All right, step four is to find that p-value. So we'll draw the curve. Um, we had a not equal case, which means we'll shade both tails. Right, not equal is two-tailed, which means we're just gonna double that p-value. Um, so we had a t-score of 1.352, so that would be the one on the right side. Um, the one on the left side would be the same, but negative, but it doesn't matter for what we're doing. And we need degrees of freedom, which is 11, 12 minus 1. All right, so our p-value will be double for two-tailed. t-cdf, because we're on the t-curve. I'll do the right side, so our lower will be 1.352, our upper will be infinity because we keep going, 10 to the 99, and degrees of freedom is 11. So second distribution, TCDF, lower, comma, upper, comma, degrees of freedom. And we get 0 0.2035. So this is too risky, right? We were only willing to take 5% risk, and this is beyond that. So too risky. It could just happen randomly, which means it doesn't disprove that it's incorrect. So our sample, right, was only slightly above 5 pounds, and so maybe it was just random. So it's too risky. We do not reject. We do not reject HO, which is the mean equals five. It's possible the average is still five because this wasn't that far off. That's the idea. So there's not enough evidence at 5% to show the filling machine is filling incorrectly. There is not enough evidence at 5% to show the filling machine is incorrect on average. Right, every bag is slightly different and that's okay, but on average we might still be at five. And our sample wasn't five, just randomly we were slightly over, right? We were barely over five. All right, let's do a confidence interval. So I'm gonna copy um, X bar, S and N down because we'll need those. So copy those over because we'll use those for the confidence interval. Because we're still looking at the same data. And then we'll jump into part B, calculating a 95% confidence interval. For the true average, so we're still in mean land, which means we're using x bar plus or minus t times s over root n. That was the formula for means. And we have all of that information right here except for t. So let's go ahead and put that 95% in the middle. So 0.95. Um, I think we get 0 0.025 for each tail, so that the whole curve adds up to 1. Um, sample size was 12, so degrees of freedom was 11, 12 minus 1. So you'll go to the 0 0.025 column and go down to degrees of freedom 11. And you should get a t-score from the table of 2.01. So this is from our t-table. And let's start plugging in. 
So 5.0525 plus or minus 2.201 times 0 0.13451 all over square root 12. And we've done a couple of these by now, right? So if you're feeling confident, go ahead and pause the video and do it without me. If you want to watch me, um, here we go. So just typing it on the calculator. So I didn't do the first part, so we still have 5.0525. I wrote that wrong. And then our plus or minus piece according to the calculator will be 0 0.0855. And I did four decimal places because my first one was four decimal places. And so then we'll add and subtract. So the mu or mean is in the interval. We'll do subtraction first. 5.0525 minus 0 0.0855. And then we'll repeat it with a plus. And so we get mu is in the interval of 4.967 up to 5.138. And that is our 95% confidence interval. We're 95% confident that the true average is somewhere between 4.9 and 5.1. And so why does this agree with our confidence, uh, with our hypothesis test? So what is our um, interval telling us? Our interval is telling us that the average could be 4.967 up to 5.138. If we don't remember, these are reasonable possibilities. So anything in between is a reasonable possibility. So it's not telling us what the average is. It's telling us that our average is somewhere in here. And so since we did not reject, this is what we did with the hypothesis test. We did not reject the fact that the mean could be five. And according to our confidence interval, right, the mean could still be five because five is in the interval. It doesn't mean the mean is five, it just means it's still possible. So it agrees um, with do not reject mu equals five because mu could be five. if, oops, if mu is in the interval from 4.967 to 5.138. So it just means five is still possible. So not rejecting isn't saying the average is five, it's just saying the average could be five. And that's what the confidence interval is telling me as well. It's possible that the mean is actually 5.1 and we're wrong, right? But we're just not eliminating the option of five yet. All right, we'll do one more um, hypothesis test in the next video.